Welcome to Electron Line. In order to get a better concept or a better idea of what the radius of gyration is, we're going to work out an example. Here we have a square, which is at a distance a away from the x-axis. We're going to calculate the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis for the square, and then we're going to find the radius of gyration for that square. In other words, we're going to replace the square by a thin little strip, such that the area of the strip is equal to the area of the square and then we have to place it at a particular distance away from the x-axis yes this is the x-axis this is the y-axis in such a way that the moment of inertia of the strip is exactly the same as the moment of inertia of the square relative to the x-axis and that means we need to find out the position of the strip which means the distance from the x-axis will then equal the radius of gyration so first, let's find the moment of inertia of this square. We're going to draw a small little air element. We'll call that dA. And dA is equal to the width of that, which is equal to A, times the height, which is going to be equal to a dy. That strip is a distance y away from the x-axis, and the thickness of that little dA is going to be equal to a dy. So now the definition of the moment of inertia is that the moment of inertia of that strip relative to the x-axis is going to be equal to the distance squared, y squared, times the area dA, which means if you want to find the moment of inertia of the entire square, we're going to have to integrate that from y equals a to y equals 2a. So from a to 2a, and this is equal to the integral from a to 2a, of y squared, and instead of dA, we're going to write a times dy. Whoop, not a d, a times dy. Of course, since a is a constant, let me rewrite that. I can come out of the integral sign. I'm writing terrible a's. There, that's a much better looking a. All right, so now we can write this as equal to the a times the integral of y squared dy from a to 2a. So next, let's go ahead and integrate that. So this is equal to a times, the integral becomes y cubed over 3, and evaluated from a to 2a, which is equal to a over 3 times, that would be y cubed, we replace it by 2a, so that would be 2a cubed minus a cubed. So this becomes equal to a over 3, and this is 8a cubed minus a cubed or 7a cubed and finally we can see that the moment of inertia i sub x is going to be equal to 7 thirds a to the fourth power. All right so now that we have the moment of inertia of the area there the square we can now find the radius of gyration to that square in other words we now know that i sub x which is equal to 7 thirds a to the fourth power is going to be equal to the radius of gyration squared times the area of the strip, which of course is equal to the radius of gyration squared times the area of the rectangle, or in this case, the square. All right, that means if we solve for the radius of gyration, that is equal to the square root, of the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis of the square divided by the area of the square area. So this is equal to the square root of i sub x, which is 7 thirds a to the fourth divided by the area of the rectangle. Of course, the area of, I should say, square because the sides are the same. So the area of the square, which is a squared, which means that the radius of gyration is equal to 7 thirds a squared and take the square root of that. Or simplified, the radius of gyration is equal to the square root of 7 divided by 3 times a. Now, what is the square root of 7 divided by 3? Because that will give us a feel for what that is equal to, or what the concept is. So 7 divided by 3, take the square root of that, I get 1.53. So this is approximately equal to 1.53 times a. So what is that telling us? That means that if that square 
could be replaced by a thin strip, a representative strip with the same area, you would have to place it at a distance of 1.53 times A in order to get the same moment of inertia. Another way of thinking about the radius of gyration is as follows. If we could concentrate all of the area, or if we have an object with mass, all of the mass at a distance of 1.53 times A, which would put it slightly past the center mass. Notice the center mass of the square is at a distance of 1.5 times A. A is the distance from the axis to the bottom of the square, and that would be another half A. So we'd have to put all of the mass or all of the area just slightly above it, 1.53 times A, to have a representative place or point where all the mass would be located if it was located at a single position or all the area was located at a single position. So this whole square could be replaced by a single object right here at a distance of 1.53 times the side, 1.53 times the side away from the x-axis. And that was what we mean by the radius of gyration.